Hello, AP Bio. In this video, I'm going to talk about the cell cycle. So the first thing let's do, I'm on page 35 at the top of your notes. And we talked about this a little bit in class, but I figured I'd start from the beginning. So you can skip ahead if you already got this, but if you weren't in class, I'm going to uh, give you a little bit of notes. The first thing let's do is actually just define what the cell cycle is. And the cell cycle in its simplest terms just means the life cycle of a cell. And during this life cycle, it, the cycle actually just alternates in between two groups of processes that, that alternates between the main or the longest phase, I should say, uh, which is interphase. And what I can think of as active division, which is called the M phase. And the M phase actually consists of two different processes, and we'll talk about them both. Mitosis is the first, which you likely have heard of, and something called cytokinesis. And we'll go over those in just a moment. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually sort of put in context what occurs during the cell cycle. And in order to do that, uh, we're going to... Uh, draw this alternation of the two stages. So you notice in your notes, you've got these two arrows. And on the left-hand side, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the, the main stage. And the only reason I call it the main stage is because it's really the purpose of a cell. And then over on the right, we're going to talk about the M stage. And like I said, the M stage is really divided into two different important processes or distinct events. One is called mitosis and the other is called cytokinesis. Now, remember in this unit, we're talking about cell cycle, I mean, uh, cell signaling or cell communication. So also in this life cycle of a cell, I wanna put, it, uh, add in a little bit of information about how the cell controls cell division because it's important to control when cells divide and, and as important when they don't divide. So let's provide a little bit of detail first about interphase. I, I said a couple of times that it's the main phase. Really, why I say the main phase is because this is 90% of the cell cycle. And the interphase can be divided into three what we call subphases. The first is called G1. The second is called the S phase. And the third is called G2. The first phase, uh, substage or sub phase of interphase is called G1. It's also called gap one. That's what the G stands for. Some people say it's called growth one. And in this is the longest uh, stage of the cell cycle. And this is just when a cell is being a cell. Let's say it's normal cell function. So that if you're a neuron, you're sending action potentials. If you're a stomach cell in the fundic part of the stomach, that you are producing gastric juices. If you're a goblet cell in the epithelium of the small intestine, you're producing mucin and secreting that onto your surface to produce mucus. So it's just a cell doing its actual cell function. So you can imagine thinking about it, that's of course why it's most of the cell. Uh, cycle. Most of the life cycle of the cell is just normal cell function. Now, during normal cell function throughout this gap stage, the cell actually does grow. But because it's growing and because it has to carry out all its normal metabolic processes, it needs to be able to have access to its DNA. So the genetic information, or you guys know that is DNA, in this stage is open. And we're gonna learn, I'm gonna embed some terminology into this diagram. We've got a bunch of C words that we need to learn about. And the genetic information, we, know, we talk about chromosomes all the time, but chromosomes actually are spe only uh, present specifically during a particular part of the cell cycle. And the genetic information in this part of the cell cycle needs to be accessible. And we say that the term we use to de describe it at this uh, part of the cell cycle is called chromatin. Now, f after the G1 or not, or between the G1 and the S, there is a cell signaling or a cell stoplight or a biological stoplight. We call it a 
checkpoint called the G1 checkpoint because this is where it occurs. And this is a cell signaling point when it'll it, there is some control of the cell cycle. Can the cell continue to divide or is there something that needs to happen before it can divide or will it not divide? So that uh, we'll come back to this uh, toward the end of the flip. The next subphase of the cell cycle is called the S phase, and it's called the S phase because it involves synthesis. And this I think of as the first active stage of cell division. The cell is getting ready to divide, and the first thing it needs to do is replicate its genetic information, and that's what's happening here. We, uh, it is synthesis, but we use the term replication to refer to DNA synthesis to um, emphasize that the DNA is going to be an exact copy. So the cell makes an exact copy of DNA. Now I'm going to give you a little bit more terminology. The chromatin at this point has an exact copy, but it's in, uh, important for the process of division for those exact copies to be connected to one another. When, there, when a chromosome is replicated, we say that each of the replicated chromosomes is are called sister chromatids. I told you there was a lot of C words. They're connected <clears throat> at the centromere which is just a protein complex that connects these exact copies of chromosome, chromato, uh, chromosomes, <clears throat> the sister chromatids. Now, it, after the S phase, uh, at some point after the S phase, during the G2, we have another biological stoplight, which is called the G2 checkpoint. And again, we'll come back to it later, what's actually happening during that signaling place. The final substage of the um, interphase is called the G2, and that's the gap two phase, sometimes called growth two. And in this stage, the cell continues to synthesize cell parts. You can think of this is cell where the cell prepares to divide, <clears throat> and it's going to make. Uh, it's going to produce, it's going to replicate its DNA, its uh, organelles, and it's going to make proteins that are necessary because now what's going to happen is the cells actually divide in two in a minute um, or in the next stages. And so uh, there's, uh, or, it's going to produce organelles like mitochondria um, and more Golgi and et cetera, different proteins, different RNAs, et cetera, things it needs to, uh, in order to make uh, a, another cell. Okay, so that's 90% of the cell cycle over here in interphase. When the cell is carrying out its normal function, then it's checked to make sure things are, pro or the cell can divide, then it's gonna replicate its DNA, then that's checked, and then it's gonna replicate its organelles, et cetera, to prepare to divide. And then it goes over into what I think of as active division. Although honestly, uh, over here, I, I mentioned that earlier, that really DNA synthesis or DNA replication is active cell division, the, the DNA is replicated. So that's, it's now gonna, it's now ready to make another, it's starting to make another cell. In any case, we have this second, uh, phase, the M phase, that consists of two different important events, mitosis and cytokinesis. And in eukaryotic cells, the DNA, the, the collection of all the DNA, all the chromosomes, it's called the genome, that genome in every cell needs an exact copy of the genome. So what eukaryotic cells do in order to ensure that every cell has a full copy is the first thing they do is actually divide the nucleus before the cell even divides. And that's actually what mitosis is. It's nuclear division. Now, only after there is nuclear division do you actually get cell division. And you cell division is really just division of everything else. And we call that everything else, if you recall, the cytoplasm. So that's what cytokinesis is, is division of the cytoplasm. And so the M stage or the M phase 
is really comprised of these two different events. First, the nucleus divides, and then the cytoplasm divides. The nuclear division has been well studied, and we can divide it into five different stages. They're not distinct stages. They can, they happen continuously, uh, but we have terminology and you need to understand how the nucleus divides. You need to know how the nucleus divides. And we use a mnemonic PPMAT, PPMAT, to describe the five stages of mitosis. And it's describing how this nuclear material is dividing. Prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And we'll talk about those a little bit later in the flip. But essentially what's happening during these stages is the genetic material is being arranged so that it can be pulled into two identical piles because it, it replicated over here in the S phase. And remember that over in the S phase and all along, the, chrom the chromosomes have been relaxed in this chromatin, this open form of the chromosomes so that the genes are accessible for protein synthesis. Now, during active nuclear division, during mitosis, the chromatin condenses so that it can be divided, organized and divided into two different piles. And we say that the chromatin condenses into chromosomes. So this is where chromosomes exist. Just during this 10% of the cell cycle, right? So not for particularly long. Now, they're molecules. Chromosomes are just molecules. They're just DNA and proteins. Um, and so they can't move themselves around. And so there's a temporary protein structure called the mitotic spindle. And it's going to organize this replicated DNA and split it into two exact piles. The mitotic spindle organizes and splits the replicated DNA. Now, if you can imagine, this is important that this is happening properly. So we've got another one of these biological stoplights here. It's called the M checkpoint, and it occurs during the uh, mitosis. Specifically, it occurs right here during the metaphage stage of mitosis. And we'll come back to it. We'll talk about it in a little bit more detail. And then the final stage of the cell cycle is cy cytokinesis. The cytoplasm divides and we get the form, this forms two identical cells and we call them, these two identical cells, daughter cells. So the life cycle of cell involves the cell doing its cell stuff and then eventually becoming two cells. Now, some cells don't actually actively, ever actively divide. And it, as the cell progresses through interphase, it goes off into what's called G0 or G0, and it'll ex exit in a dividing stage. And, and many cells never divide. Um, but if, if a cell is going to divide, it gets that signal here and uh, goes into the S phase. The DNA replicates, and uh, then there is another checkpoint here, and then the, it goes into the uh the cell prepares to divide. We get one more biological stoplight here. And then at the end of the cell cycle, you can see here you end up with two identical daughter cells. Okay. Now, when talking about the cell cycle, specifically looking at this right here, if mitosis is division of the nucleus, then what the heck are prokaryotic cells doing? Because they don't have a nucleus. And it turns out that not so all, different cells have different reasons for dividing. So let's just talk about that for a moment. You don't have to necessarily write anything down, but I do want you to understand why cells divide. If it's a single celled or organism, a unicellular organism, it divides because that's how it reproduces. So that's actually just reproduction. One single unicellular organism, when it divides, and there's two of them, right? That's just asexual reproduction. And that's how it makes babies. Now, in multicellular organisms, cells have to divide for a variety of reasons. Not all cells don't live forever. They have different lifespans. For example, cells that are, are under constant onslaught of, of 
chemicals, things from the environment, and a lot of mechanical damage, like the small the epithelium of the small intestine, those cells only live two to four days in the stomach, two to nine days. We talked about neutrophils. They only eat one pathogen, and then they die in a pile, right? So those are only one to five days. But some cells... Uh, live me- sort of a medium amount of time, like something like a red blood cell lives about four months. But some of your cells are actually your chronological age, like your lens cells. That's why you can get UV dam- uh, damage in your lenses. That's why you got to wear polarized sunglasses because you can get sun damage in your lens cells. That's what cataracts is and then you have to have your lens is replaced females biological females their reproductive cells uh last a lifetime it's very interesting we'll talk about uh oogenesis and the production of egg cells but uh not until the next unit anyway but you can see how different cells have different uh life spans and so the life cycle of those cells requires um, organisms to make more of them. So in multicellular organisms, there's other reasons to make more cells. First of all, organisms get bigger, right? We call that growth. And then uh, you began as a single zygote, and then there is this division of a single cell to become a multicellular organism. That's not the same thing as growth. We use the word development for that. And we'll talk about animal development a little bit later in the unit. And then finally, like I said, not all cells live forever, sometimes because they're injured, so that's repair, but also um, because cells have a particular lifespan, like at every four months, you need new red blood cell, right? So that's called renewal because that's sort of the the lifespan of that cell. So we have in in multicellular organisms, we have growth and development, repair and renewal, and then in single-celled organisms, that's actually what reproduction looks like. Now, some unicellular organisms are eukaryotic, and those would care those would go through the eukaryotic life cycle that we just that I just um, described. But prokaryotic cells don't have a nucleus, so they're certainly not going to carry out mitosis because they don't have a nucleus to divide. And it's a little bit of a simpler process because they have much less DNA, if you recall from our conversation in Unit Two. And the process of prokaryotic uh, cell division is called binary fission. So that's just prokaryotic cell division. And in your notes, you've got a little diagram. In in the first stage, you can label the first one one right here. In that first stage, it's it's similar to interphase, right? A cell is just doing its normal cell function and the cell grows. Now there's some type of a signal to divide and the first thing this the first thing that happens for active cell division is DNA replication. So that's the same. Now remember that in DNA replication uh, we've only got a single circular chromosome. And so what happens is that it actually is attached to the cell membrane and it it uh, makes a second copy of it slightly attached to the membrane. You can see that in your diagram. You could label that number two. And as the cell membrane elongates, it actually pulls the two uh, circular chromosomes apart. As the cell elongates. Now, the next thing that happens is binary, meaning two, fission, meaning division. The cell actually just, this filament kind of snug, pinches it in, in the, in the middle of the cell. It's called a pinching in, so that we could just say the cell pinches in. You could label that one number three. And then a number four, could chunk the cell just divides into two identical daughter cells. We use that same language, daughter cells. So this is how, uh, that's how a prokaryotic cell divides, a non-nucleated cell. Now, we are talking about, uh, this, is, this unit is all about cell signaling. So uh, let's go back and think about those 
uh, the control of the cell cycle. The control of the cell cycle is important. Cells just can't con divide all the time. And sometimes cell division needs to be turned on. So the cell cycle has to be controlled. When is it, when is it important to make new cells? When is it important to turn it off and make sure that there's no new cells? And that cell cycle is tightly controlled using cell communication to regulate how quickly cells um, uh, will divide and how tightly packed together they are. And then most importantly, to make sure that the genome has integrity. It's, it's an exact copy to make sure that there's nothing quote unquote wrong. So there's no abnormal cells. So uh, that's why we're talking about it in, in and amongst talking about cell signaling. So let's talk, let's say that up here, that the cell cycle is tightly controlled with cell signaling, right? But the purpose of the cell the cycle control is to regulate how fast cells are growing, the rate, and also how tightly packed they are, the density, and then also the integrity of the DNA and the cell in general. So making sure that there are exact copies. This ensures, this makes sure the genome is, oops, is precisely copied and then also, oops, oops, is precisely copied and then after it's copied, it has to be transferred. Okay, now the, the place where the control happens are these biological checkpoints, and there are three of them. Um, but let's let's first define what a checkpoint is. It's a biological stoplight, uh, and that that occurs during the cell cycle. when uh, uh, it's a particular time in the cell cycle uh, when certain substances are present in particular concentration, when a cell, uh, the cell will either divide or not. So it's going to tell a cell, oh yeah, you can divide or no, no dividing right now, no dividing for you. Uh, no, we're not going to divide. Now, let's label this diagram. Uh, I'll label the diagram, and you can draw the diagram in your notes, and then you can write a little bit of detail about each one of these biological, uh, biological stoplights. This is where we're starting right here. So here's our cell down in G1, and remember that this all in blue here is shown um, is all interface. Um, and so the cell is going to grow. Remember, we just talked about it. The cell is going to grow and grow and grow until it gets to this first checkpoint. And the first checkpoint is called, not imaginatively, the G1 checkpoint. And at the G1 checkpoint, it's checking for what's actually supposed to occur during G1, which is cell growth. And it's going to check cell size. So is it big enough to divide? This particular checkpoint is called the restriction point because following this, if the cell gets a, uh, the signal to divide, it really, thinking about that S phase, I'm, now I've said it a couple times, that's really active cell division. It's making more DNA. It doesn't need to make more DNA if it's not going to make another cell. So this is normal cell function here, and it has to get big enough and then there has to be some kind of a signal to push it into, hey, make more DNA because we need another cell, yo. Uh, and that's what happens at that restriction point, at that G1 checkpoint. Now, the next biological checkpoint is the G2 checkpoint. And the G2 checkpoint is checking for what just happened. The G2 checkpoint, which is it's checking for DNA integrity. Uh, and it makes sure that the DNA is accurate, re accurately replicated. So this, this checks for accurate D 
DNA replication. Now, if the DNA isn't accurate, it doesn't necessarily mean that the cell doesn't divide. Two things can happen, two basic things can happen. Either the DNA can be repaired and um, we'll talk about what that looks like uh, during our, un our genetics unit, what DNA replication, I mean, DNA repair looks like. Or if, this, if it's super bad, then no way, the DNA can't be repaired. And the enzymes that will, uh, will begin apoptosis go into effect and uh, apoptosis is initiated. And then that cell goes through that uh, program cell death and uh, it's a goner. And then the thing, then the replication, has to, if, this, if another cell is still needed, then another cell would have to um, be uh, their signal for another cell to divide. Now, the next stage, uh, uh, the next signaling checkpoint is the M checkpoint. And that happens here during mitosis, but it actually happens during um, the metaphase. And we're going to talk about what metaphase is. And this is called the M checkpoint. And the M checkpoint uh, is going to check for making sure the DNA is organized correctly and aligned correctly so it can be divided into two piles. And I'm just going to put in a little terminology here. I'm not going to talk much about it yet, but we'll get back to it later. This checks, oops, checks for, they can't even read that. Nobody can read that. This checks, let's erase that. I'll start again. This checks for... What's called kinetochore, kinetochore attachment, making sure that spindle is attached to the replicated chromosomes, and chromosome alignment. It has to be aligned along the middle of the cell. It's called the metaphase plate. Okay, now that's where all the checkpoints are. We're going to talk specifically about what the checkpoints are comprised of and what those um, substances are that are involved with the replication. We'll talk about that during lab. Um, but it suffice to say that the signaling molecules involved in these checkpoints are two different important proteins they're called cyclin dependent kinases. And because that's kind of a mouthful, they're called CDKs and then cyclins. And it's the action of these two proteins together that are at work at each one of these uh, biological stoplights. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna go into detail in this, what mitosis is. So let's go, uh, let's turn the page, page 36. And in your lab, we're gonna look at what mitosis looks like underneath the microscope. But in advance of your lab, you have to sort of understand what, what does mitosis look like? Um, what does division of this nucleus look like? And so let's draw, and I'm gonna give you some terminology so you can see what division of the nucleus looks like. What I want to make sure I emphasize at the beginning of talking about mitosis, first of all, remember that it is division of the nucleus, not division uh, of the cell nucleus, um, and that it is not a, it doesn't take up a particularly long period of time in this in the context of the cell cycle. That ninety percent of the life cycle of the cell is interphase. So let's just draw that here. That interphase, remember, uh, we, and I'm going to draw the nucleus really big because these circles are really small, but we have uh, the nuclear envelope and in the nuclear envelope, we've got this relaxed chromatin here, which are these linear chromosomes that are not scrunched up yet. The condensing means to scrunch up. This is 
interphase and the, the genetic material is chromatin. Now, during interphase, remember we have the G1 and then we have the, the chromatin, the chromosomes are replicated during the S and then we have G2. This right here is the beginning of mitosis. So now we've got nuclear division right here. So this is mitosis. So let's, the first thing that has to happen is the DNA needs to be scrunched up so it can be divided into two different piles. And that's the, what the first stage is. This first stage is called prophase and actually can be divided into two substages, prophase and what's called prometaphase. And we're just going to draw them both in this first uh, circle right here. What happens is, is the DNA or the chromatin condenses into chromosomes. And so you get this, we could put the, the nuclear membrane in, but I'm gonna draw the dashes even further apart and I'll tell you why in a second, but let's just draw it first. But that first thing that's gonna happen, like I said, is the DNA is gonna condense. And then I'm only gonna draw two chromosomes because I've got this tiny little drawing here. Um, but you can see that the chrome, now the chromatin condenses into chromosomes. So let's, let's label that that's what's happening during prophase. The chromatin condenses into chromosomes. Now, if you think about what's happening, the DNA needs to be divided into two separate piles, right? So the other thing that needs to happen is that temporary protein structure that moves the DNA needs to form. And so these specialized protein filament makers called centrioles are going to move to the poles of the cell, the ends, and they're going to start to produce this, what's called the mitotic spindle. And so that mitotic spindle is going to attach to the, um, the replicated chromosomes that have now condensed. And so here we should say that the mitotic spindle forms... Let's label that here, the mitotic spindle. It's attaching to the chromosomes and it attaches at a protein complex called the kinetochore. So the mit mitotic spindle attaches to the kinetochore. And you can think of it kind of like the ring on a dog collar. It's like, that's how the protein filament attaches to the replicated chromosome. And now that's during, you can think of that as prometaphase. So it's like toward the next stage in prometaphase. The other thing that happens is in order for the DNA to be divided into two different piles, the nucleus has to, the nuclear envelope has to go away. And that does happen. The nuclear envelope, it's called fragments, envelope fragments and it you can think of it as it makes chunks and then those chunks are going to coalesce later and reform the daughter nuclei uh, envelopes okay so the next stage is called metaphase and in metaphase the nuclear envelope is gone and the mitotic spindle has successfully moved those replicated chromosomes using the spindle apparatus to the middle of the cell. So there are there are parts of the spindle apparatus that aren't attached to the chromosomes, but then there are the parts that are attached. So those are attached at, like I said, the kinetic core. So let's write down that the replicated chromosomes and you can see that they're replicated in the in my diagram here. The replicated chromosomes are aligned using the spindle apparatus on the metaphase plate. That's the place, it's an imaginary, kind of like the equator is an imaginary uh, equator line. The metaphase plate uh, by that spindle or by... Let's say, call it the mitotic spindle. And that's called metaphase. And you can think of it as that's in the middle, right? Meta in the middle. Now, the next thing that has to happen is 
the the sister chromatids are going to be pulled apart and that and that stage is called anaphase. You can remember it because A, anaphase, apart. Anaphase. And in anaphase, the a spindle apparatus actually short. I keep drawing those. Those are called centrioles. It's going to pull those chromosomes apart and the sister chromatids apart. And you see how I'm drawing them kind of like a V. It's because they're kind of floppy. They're just being pulled uh, to the poles. And let's write that down. The sister chromatids, chromatids are pulled toward the poles. Those edges, the ends of the cells are called the poles by the mitotic spindle. And the other thing that happens is these, they're called non kinetochore mitotic spindle fibers. They actually sort of are laced together and they put pressure on the cell and push the cell to either side. And that's going to elongate the membrane. It sends a signal to sort of make more membrane. So let's, let's label that. That's also happening during anaphase. The non kinetochore microtubules elongate the cell. Okay, so now we've got this cell elongated and we've got the sister chromatins being pulled to the poles. Well, they're pulled all the way, well, now this is in the other orientation. Sorry, I should have drawn this the other way, but now we have this, now we've got these sister chromatids arriving at the poles of the cell and those fragments of the DNA, I mean, of the uh, nuclear envelope come back together. This stage right here is called telophase or telophase, telophase. And I think of that as it's the cells are being put back together. So what happens is, is that the daughter chromosomes reach the poles daughter chromosomes, or they're really sister chromatids, or you can, call, now at this point, you could call them daughter chromosomes. They reach the cell poles and form two new daughter nuclei. And then we have this third stage where the cytoplasm divides, remember, or it's a substage within the M phase, we get cytokinesis. And that's what's happening here. Keeping in mind that we're sort of drawing this separately, but really telophase and cytokinesis are going to happen simultaneously. Now, cytokinesis uh, happens differently in plants and animals. And I'll talk a little bit about that in class. Um, but I think that's enough information for now. So just to recap, the cell cycle is, describes the life cycle of a cell. 90% of the time it's being a cell, but then it goes from one cell to two cells when it gets the signal to divide. That signal to divide is tightly controlled. That control is accomplished with these two different proteins, cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases, and that occurs at these biological checkpoints called, uh, that are called for the stage where they exist in the cell cycle. And that within division of the nucleus, we have five different stages where the nuclear material is going to divide. And you end up with beginning outside mitosis, beginning with a cell being a normal cell. You enter, enter into active mitosis here. And then at the end with cytokinesis, you have two identical daughter cells with the same exact genetic information and you enter back into <clears throat> interphase and then the cell grows again and the life cycle of the cell starts again. Okay, that's it.